4, King James Version. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. And I chose this topic because we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Paul is writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And what he's declaring to the people there uh, under Paul, under Timothy's pastoral ministry is I want you to know that the Spirit has given me something to give to you. And then Paul basically is expressing what we all believe about Scripture and Revelation, and that is that all Scripture was given by inspiration of God. Yeah, yeah. And so God's speaking and Paul's writing as God speaks. And he said the Spirit is speaking lucidly, very clear. Paul, Paul had, had very, very keen insight at this moment. And he says, I, I need to tell you something uh, about the Spirit of God. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit and how we need to be filled with him, how he leads us, how he baptized us, how he seals us, how he has regenerated us. But we need to know this, that Satan, and brother, brother, uh, brother uh, Hunter, for the first time, I can tell you all to be seated. I done missed that every time I stood up. The first day the ushers, you may be seated. Thank God. I, they warned me about that since I've been there for six months. I've never said that. I know it. That gave me the cue. Amen. Him and his brother cornered me off in the fellowship hall. I thought they were going to jump on me. Praise God for all our blessing flow. Let me get back to the text very quickly. Now, everything God does, Satan tries to imitate it. Everything God does, Satan will try and imitate it. He will do his very best. Matter of fact, the Bible says in the passage that deals with the, the, the end time, Matthew 24, 25, it says, if God did not shorten the days, even the very elect will be deceived. This is how powerful deception is. I want to talk with you about deceptive spirits. Deceptive spirits. A deceiver can't deceive if he doesn't make himself look like he's trying to deceive. In other words, he has to appear to be real in order to deceive. Satan knows he won't get you if he come with two horns and he has a pitchfork dressed in red with a tail. He know you got that. He know you're going to call him on the carpet if he came like that. So he probably won't do that. He will probably come, men, to us with the brick house. That's probably how he'll come. And I don't mean to harm ladies, but she'll probably have on red. I don't mean no harm. And ladies, for you, you know how he's coming. Right when you're vulnerable, he's going to be tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> Satan, listen, Satan, he's not eternal. But he's been around much longer than we have. He knows my patterns. He traced me all the way to Jesus. And he discovered my strengths and my weaknesses. He knows how and when and where to trap me. He knows it. And nowadays he's on the increase. He has, he has what the Bible calls demons. I'm going to read something here in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, say latter times, yeah. some, not all, but some shall depart 
from the faith. Here's what. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the implication is Satan has established his churches. He has established a system of teachings that are perhaps similar to what you and I believe. In order to deceive me, he has to give me something I gravitate toward. And cause me to feel comfortable with it. Now, these seducing spirits has to work their hocus pocus and magic potion in unique ways. Many of us love the hocus pocus. We say it this way, I rebuke you, Jesus, uh, Satan, in the name of Jesus. That's almost like saying, hocus pocus, abracadabra, gate open. How many of you rebuke something in Jesus' name and nothing happened? Tell two shame here. You say it a hundred times, in Jesus' name. And it looks like the thing you say, okay, so? See, things are not cast out by a potion or a formula. They're cast out by power. It's not what I say. It's who is working through me. That's how that happens. It's power because you have to overcome an opposing power. So Paul says, I want to set you up, church, here in Ephesus under Timothy's leadership. I want to share with you some things that are going on very quickly. And he informs them that there will come along some deceiving preachers, prophets, teachers. They will put on the guard. They will have the lingo. They know how to say amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. They know how to shout, clap, run, cry. They can do it all. But they're deceptive. The Apostle John and the Apostle Paul both write extensively regarding deceptive spirits, prophets, and as well as self-deception. Self-deception is a big one. We tend to fool ourselves more than being fooled by other folk. You know, I believe, I believe God's going to do this for me. I believe God, God's going to bless all of us who walk with him and follow him. Really, if I keep in step with God, my blessing is in store for me. And I believe that as long as I honor him, he's going to honor me. He said, if you profess me before me, and I profess you before my father. If you honor me publicly, I honor you publicly. If you pray privately, I bless you so everybody can see it. And so it's, it's, it's really easy, but we've complicated the matters uh, with, 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 with these various kinds of teaching. Neil Emerson, who's uh, a guru on, 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 on spirits and things like that, he says, Satan's demonic forces are at work attempting to pollute your mind with lies in order to keep you from walking in the truth. In other words, he'll give you something good to keep you from getting the best. You remember when you did that to Jesus? Jesus in the wilderness. He says, Jesus, if you be the son of God, turn this stone to pray. Now what's wrong with that? I'm hungry. Fast for 40 days, 40 night. Stone right here. I have power. Why don't I eat me a piece of bread? What's up with that? The problem with it is, who asked me to eat the bread? That's the problem. Then I'm going to be following him. I'm going to be yielding to his order. And so if he tells me to buy you a loaf of bread, I better not buy it if Satan tells me to buy it. That bread may mess you up. Because I'm following the wrong one. President Roosevelt said these words years ago. He said the only dependable fortune teller he has ever known is the life insurance man. <laughs> he tell you what's going to happen and it does. <laughs> <laughs> it 
to a non-preacher to tell us preachers what we ought to listen to. The word deceiving means an imposter or seducing. It means an imposter, one who misleads to lead someone into error. All right. The word spirits in this text refers to evil spirits actuating 